Let's face it, forgiveness is not an easy thing for most of us. I get this uh, service by a Dominican uh, priest who writes reflections on the scriptures, and I thought his thoughts for today really uh, resonated with me. He writes, his name is uh, Jude Siciliano. He says, we don't seem to have made much progress since Sirach wrote his words almost 200 years before Christ. Observing his contemporaries, he lamented the discord and the violence that he saw, the vengeance, the anger, and the lack of mercy and forgiveness. So what's changed? Judging from the national news, nothing. He goes on to mention the killing of African American men at the hands of police officers, the political conventions, the bitter campaign speeches, the name calling, and then marches even demanding an end to racism, demanding justice that then result also in bottle throwing and, and more anger. Our society currently and maybe has often been filled with rage and demands for justice. But I would like to say is retribution, getting back at someone the only way. Sadly, you well know this. This happens in our neighborhoods. It happens in the workplace. And of course, in our families. In my own family, my father's side, I had an aunt and uncle who lived right next door to each other and they could not even speak to each other. I think the only two times they did speak were at my grandparents, their parents' funerals to settle some things. Very sad. I, I don't fully understand even the reasons why that was. Was it because of money? Was it because of something that was said years ago that offended an in-law? Who knows? But they couldn't let it go. I know that each one of us, each one of you, has a story, maybe from your own family. And what about in our business dealings, too? I began to think, I wonder why Peter even asks Jesus his question. Maybe he had been slighted in selling his fish from his business. Had he been betrayed by someone? But at least he asks the question, Lord, what must I do? So he's somewhat paying attention to Jesus. You know, the rabbis taught that the duty to forgive had been fulfilled if someone forgave an offender just three times. So Peter must have thought he was being really big to forgive seven times. The number actually signifies completeness. But what does Jesus do? Jesus absolutely astounds him with an answer that goes beyond practicality, beyond common sense. It can only be the kind of a conscious decision because of faith. That's what I would say. How you understand God in your life, how you understand God calling you to something in this life. It's the call to discipleship. It's not easy. If you pay attention to the Gospels, you well know that we're all being called to forgive even those who hurt us, even our enemies. Jesus says that. How many people have been able to do that down through the millennia? Now, we may even want to forgive someone, but then all the emotions get in the way. Or maybe because we confuse con forgiveness with condoning wrong behavior. It's not about that. We've all heard the expression, uh, hate the sin, love the sinner. But I think there can be even more distinctions Forgiveness is not the same as pardon. A court may waive punishment, but not really forgive the wrong. Real forgiveness, I would say, allows for a deep healing for both parties, even while we're not condoning an offense or a wrong or an injustice. Forgiveness is also not about forgetting. We all know that some wounds never go away. I can't help but think of the sexual abuse crisis, even in our own church. And then denial doesn't help. It only creates more problems. And it's also possible, I think, to forgive without 
being fully reconciled, even as much as St. Paul calls us to be ministers of reconciliation. If we can do that, it's wonderful. Even with a great effort sometimes to forgive someone, you realize that you just can't be in their presence. So we need to look wrongdoing, offenses, injustices right in the eye, call them for what they are, and even maybe let the horror of it outrage us. But then we need to move somewhere. If we really want healing for ourselves, for others, for our society, then we must also let the healing be as deep as the wound. To forgive, we have to call on God who has mercy on us, and then let go of resentment and revenge and foster some level of understanding and generosity. And maybe it's a process that takes a lifetime. I really, truly believe that only faith can guide the process. Otherwise, we get devoured. We get eaten up by our anger and our resentment. We become prisoners of our own emotions. Forgiveness can't rely just on feelings. It's about a decision. Sirach seems to anticipate Jesus, as it says, could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Advocating forgiveness and mercy is the noblest and most helpful of the responses for any of us to make, and it really gets everyone involved. And the point seems to be in this scripture from Sirach, not about feeling forgiveness from others, but from God. If we nurture anger, we're simply not going to enjoy God's healing. But if we do forgive, then our own prayers for forgiveness can come to fruition and have an answer. So as human and as frail as we are, it's only by God's grace, God's empowering us, that we can overcome and move through this process of healing. It takes a certain openness and a certain letting go. This is the call to discipleship. You know, I, I thought about the song Amazing Grace, right? It recognizes our weakness and the need for God's gift, God's greatness. God is always good and merciful, as we sang in the song. This is the message of Jesus' parable today. So experiencing graciousness, then we're to call it or move it forward with others. Sadly, anger and often fear lead too many people to forget who they even are, especially as Christians. Paul says, none of us lives for oneself. We live for the Lord. So today, I think we need to pray for greater understanding of ourselves, of others, of others in our society, so that God can help us always do the right thing, even if it's just us moving things a little bit forward. I was thinking, you know, we say at Christmas time there should be peace and love. Well, maybe we need a little Christmas right this very minute, as that other song says. We need it for all of us. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me.